peace be to you. The common misinterpretation of the Christians who are not spirit-filled by Lord Yeshua or Yashu, is they have misunderstood as prophecy on not one stone shall be left upon another concerning the retaining walls of the Jerusalem temple. Let's examine the prophecy of Lord Yeshua in the context of what his disciples asked him in relation to what they saw. In Mark 13 verse 1 to 2, it is written, And as he went out of the set apart place, one of his taught ones said to him, Teacher, see what stones and what buildings. And Yeshua answering, said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another at all, which shall not be thrown down. Unquote the context of the prophecy of Lord Yeshua is obviously regarding the great buildings, which he and his disciples just came out of the temple complex. It does not make sense to include the retaining walls of the temple complex, which are not part of the temple buildings. In Matthew 24 verse 2, And Yeshua said to them, Do you not see all these? Truly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another, at all, which shall not be thrown down. Unquote both Mark 13 verse 2 and Matthew 24 verse 2 mentions that Lord Yeshua appointed his disciples to the physical building of the temple and did not include the retaining walls in these words, Do you not see all these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another at all, which shall not be thrown down. The western wall of Jerusalem at the Temple Mount could be original wall built at the time of King Herod or by a later ruler. But the fact is that the Temple Mount where the Dome of the Rock is located today, is where Jerusalem's second temple was once originally located. The construction of the third temple in Jerusalem is very important, because of the prophecy of Lord Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ who said, So when you see the abomination that lays waste, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, set up in a set-apart place, he who reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Yehuda flee to the mountains. Quote Matthew chapter 24 verses 15 to 16. What prophet Daniel had spoken of the set apart place was concerning the holy place, where the Ark of the Covenant of Mose was once kept inside the Jerusalem temple built by King Solomon. As Lord Yeshua HaMashiach had personally quoted about Daniel the prophet prophesied concerning the abomination that lays waste, then he was the anointed prince, who came exactly after 69 weeks. So, there is only one week left for the completion of 70 weeks, as prophesied by Prophet Daniel in Daniel chapter 9 verse 24. But Lord Yeshua HaMashiach himself would not fulfill it, since he had attributed it to the Messiah, who lays waste with an abomination. In Daniel chapter 9 verse 27, it is written, And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. And in the middle of the week, he shall put an end to slaughtering and male offering. And on the wing of abominations he shall lay waste, even until the complete end, and that which is decreed is poured out on the one who lays waste. It is commonly interpreted that one week is a sabbatical week which represents seven years. In the middle of seven years, will be three and a half years, the Messiah will come to destroy the man of lawlessness, the son of destruction, who will sit in the holy place in the temple of Jerusalem, to proclaim himself as the Elohim which is an abomination believed to fulfill what Apostle Paul had written, as to the coming of our Master Yeshua Messiah and our gathering together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as if the day of Yahuwah has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, because the falling away is, to come first, and the man of lawlessness is to be revealed, the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as Elohim in the dwelling place of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. Do you not remember that I told you this while I was still with you? Quote 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 to 5. When the second temple of Yahuwah in Jerusalem was destroyed by the Roman prince around 70 AD, it fulfilled the prophecy of Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach about not one stone shall be left upon another at all, which shall not be thrown down, regarding the physical building of the temple complex. But the son of perdition or destruction, who will proclaim himself, as the Elohim in the temple is yet to be fulfilled. If it has been fulfilled, Lord Yeshua would have come to destroy the man of lawlessness with the spirit of his mouth. 
In Luke 21 verse 24, it is written, Lord Yeshua said and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and be led away captive into all nations. And Yerushalayim shall be trampled underfoot by the nations or Gentiles until the times of the nations are fulfilled. Israel was restored as the Jewish state in 1948, which is exactly 70 years this year in 2018. But Israel has not fully gained control of Jerusalem Temple Mount, since the third Jerusalem Temple is yet to be rebuilt. Hence, the reconstruction of Jerusalem Temple will resume the prophecy of 70 weeks from where it ends. And then the lawless one shall be revealed, whom the master shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and bring to naught with the manifestation of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power and signs and wonders of falsehood, and with all the seed of unrighteousness in those perishing, because they did not receive the love of the truth, in order for them to be saved. Quote 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 8 to 10. So, the reconstruction of 3rd Jerusalem temple will not be used to worship Yahuwah Elohim, as the perfect sacrifice of Yahushua HaMashiach once, and for all eternity has broken the curse of the law, and removed the wrath of Yahuwah Elohim on the Adamic race. Rather the 3rd Jerusalem temple will be rebuilt for the son of perdition, to manifest himself as the Elohim in the temple, which is an abomination that lays waste. Let us be encouraged by what Apostle Paul had written, Therefore, my brethren, be established, and persevere in the precepts, which ye have been taught, whether by word or by our epistle. And may our Lord Jesus the Messiah himself, and Yahuwah our Father, who has loved us, and given us everlasting consolation and a good hope through his grace, comfort your hearts, and establish you in every good word, and in every good work. Shalom. Ron Spielman, you're the senior director of the City of David. Right behind us, we climbed out of a tunnel that connected the City of David to the Western Wall. And behind us here is a mound of stones, beautiful, huge, many-ton stones. They were thrown down by the Romans as they were destroying the Second Temple. But they did not stop at the physical destruction of the Second Temple. The next step was Hadrian's brilliant effort to undermine Jewish history by changing the name of Jerusalem to Aeola Capitolina and the name of Israel to Syria Palestina. He basically renamed Israel Palestine. And one of the main fights that we have today is not only the physical fight of the right for the Jewish, of the Jewish people to live in the land of Israel, we're constantly being terrorized and warred against. There's also a media or information war where the very history of the Jewish people is being challenged over and over again. Ahmadinejad, his main claim is, we're not from here. You're not from the Middle East. You're a European problem. You weren't from here. You're not from uh, this whole region. He undercuts Abraham's uh, Middle Eastern nature, the fact that he was first from Iraq and then to Turkey and then to the Holy Land, then to Egypt, then back to the Holy Land. He undercuts Persian history, which shows that Judaism was there 1,500 years before Islam. But he constantly makes an effort to point out that we have no history in Jerusalem. The great historian Arafat also uncovered a lot of these uh, uh, truths that we actually never ever lived here. And yet all your work, and the City of David's work, and all the archaeologists who are doing great work, uh, the Antiquities Authority uncovering our history, are proving otherwise. What do you say to all those that claim that we have no history and therefore no rights in this land? You know, Yishai, I would separate into two, into three. There are people who know the truth of their history. There are people who will deny all truth at all expense, radical jihadists. Islamic radicals, which you can show them proof in front of their eyes, and because of this new effort to rewrite history, they'll deny it. Neither of those two camps are the ones we need to really be concerned with. What we need to be concerned with, Ishai, is the average man and woman throughout the world who wants truth, who wants to know what happened here. And to those people, the city of David firmly explains that our people suffered this destruction 2,000 years ago. We lived here with two incredible dynasties beforehand, and the dream of that dynasty and the feeling of that dynasty never ever left our souls until we came back to this land. And everything you pull out of the ground in the city of David, every stone you overturn is another element of that, which is why here we are next to the Temple Mount. Ikrima Sabri, the Mufti of the Temple Mount once said in a Friday sermon or many times said, 
any stone you turn over in Jerusalem, not one of them shows Jewish history. He has to say this, Yishai, because every little child that kicks a bit of sand here uncovers 3,000 years of our people's history here. That's the power of where we are. Nobody can erase us. These stones may have fallen, but we're back here today. They can say that this place is called Palestine, but we know and everything we uncover is Israel. It was, it is, and it always will be. The Hadrianic War continues, and we are determined to win it. We are determined to know our own history, to know our truth, and therefore to know our rights. And I guess in the end, we're fighting the same battle, which is Lecherut Zion for the liberation of Zion. Daron Spielman, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Yishai. It's an honor.